So you're here because you clicked on a button that says that you want to see how to make a wooden American flag. I've already made that flag and then I came back to make this introductory video to tell you that it is the simplest thing I think I've ever done and I found ways in the process to make it even easier for you. You can have some other people do the work for you. Huh? Yes, for free. We'll tell you all that and how to make it right now. So I've been seeing these wooden American flags all over the place online recently. On YouTube, everyone seems to be making them and selling them, and I figured, hey, if they can make them and make some money on them, I probably can too. But this one that I'm gonna make today is the first one I've ever tried before, and I'm not gonna sell it. I'm gonna tell you later on in the video exactly what's gonna happen with it, and I hope you join me for it. Our flag is gonna be 37 inches by 19 and a half inches. Let's take a second to talk about the elements of the flag to make sure we get them right. The first is the 50 stars in the top left, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Then there's red and white alternating stripes. The top and bottom stripe are red. I messed that up, so I'll fill this in with black to make it look right. There are 13 stripes in total, seven of which are red and six are white. And then we're going to end up making a stencil for the 50 stars to make it nice and easy for ourselves. Now I found a wonderful resource online called usflag.org. On this website, you're gonna find great resources to help you figure out the exact dimensions of the different parts of the flag based on the dimension of the flag you are making. In order to get the stars in the union, which is what that blue section with the stars is called on the flag, exactly correct, I opted to make a stencil using my always trustworthy silhouette cameo. So I just grabbed the picture off the internet, loaded it into the computer, and had the machine cut out the stars. I popped them out, and now the stencil's ready to use. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we take a second and cut some wood? While I'm chopping this wood into 37 inch pieces, I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below about what you enjoyed. So cutting all that wood that I did over there is the hardest part of this entire project. And it doesn't need to be your problem at all. That's right, because when you go to a lumber store or a big box store and you're purchasing wood from them, they'll usually cut it to dimension for you for free if you just ask. So you can walk into your big box store, go to the lumber section, pick out seven of the best looking one by two by eight furring strips that you can find and definitely take the time to go through and find the good ones. They are in there and this will save you about two thirds of your budget. For all the wood I used for this project, I paid about $9. If I went with the premium stuff, I would have paid about $4.44 per piece. That's over 30 bucks in lumber to make one of these. Keep your budget down, there's no reason to spend that extra cash. Then you're gonna go find a sales associate and you're gonna say, hey, I'm buying this lumber and I need it cut to dimensions. And they're gonna go, how big do you need to cut? You're gonna say, I need 13 37 inch strips. And then I need four 18 inch strips with what's left and they're gonna cut it for you and you're gonna have everything you need if you didn't catch that here's the cut list for you now you can even take a screenshot of that and hand it to them and they will do it for you and remember say please and thank you if you're nice to them they're usually nice right back no issues and the world's a happier place Yay! Now is the perfect time to hit the long strips and short strips that we just cut, or you had cut for you, with some sandpaper just to make sure they're ready for the next step, which is applying the blue and red stains. So when trying to figure out exactly which blue and red to use for this flag, I admittedly watched a ton of YouTube videos about them online. There's a lot of them up there, and I'm not surprised, like I said, these are all over the internet. Everyone is selling them right now, and they're selling really well. Every single one that I loved in terms of color, where I was like, ooh, that's the one, had one single thing in common, and it's the paint that they used, or really the stain they used. And that is Minwax water-based tintable wood stain. Ta-da! Uh, I'm not sponsoring it or anything, they just, it's another, it's a good product and I like the colors. Um, it was scarlet for the red and true blue for the blue. Before we could prep the wood for the wood stain, I took a second to go through and make sure that the wood that was facing up was how I wanted it to look for the flag. Then I took two pieces of wood, put them on the side to make sure everything was nice and square, and then took two clamps and clamped all the wood together nice and tight. I then added a nice heavy weight, it's actually a huge nut and bolt that I got at a store once, just to hold everything flat to the table for this next step of the stencil. 
the stencil reaches out over the first seven pieces of wood. So you want to make sure it's nice and lined up. I took out a square to make sure everything was perfect. And then I drew just one line down those seven pieces of wood to delineate the area between the union and our stripes. At this point I take off all the clamps and get rid of the bottom six pieces of wood so I'm working just with those seven that we marked. Here's an awesome pro tip for you. Go to whatever drawer in your shop that you have your utility knives in and grab all of them because you're going to need seven utility blades for this next step and trust me it's well worth the effort. Now take those seven blades and drive them in with a hammer along that line that you drew with the stencil. This is going to create an awesome barrier the stain won't be able to get through to bleed through to the other side. Awesome trick. After letting the wood stain soak in for a couple of minutes, all you need to do is grab a rag and wipe off the excess. Now it's time to hit up the red. I know I already shared this in one of my shop hack videos, but it totally bears repeating. Before you use any can of paint, go around the perimeter and poke some holes in it. That way, when you go to use the brush and you go to wipe it off, that paint goes back into the jar instead of going all over your project and all over your workshop. This portion is pretty much rinse and repeat. You're going to put on a nice thick coat of the stain, let it sit for a few minutes, and then wipe it off. As soon as we're done with this, we're going to move these aside to dry, and we're going to grab the last six pieces of the flag, and then we're going to remove three of them because remember, you're only staining every other one red. So while cleaning up all of this red stain and having just had to go to the doctor last week because I sliced myself open with a chisel, I thought how ridiculously funny it would be if I grabbed all these rags and went out just to see how my wife would react if I walked into the living room pretending I was hurt. But then I realized that, that she would kill me for real. So I didn't do that, but I thought it. After giving everything ample time to dry, it's now time to bring all the boards back together and take a look at our progress and get a much better idea of what the final product will look like. I then very carefully flipped each of the boards over so that the side that I want to be facing up is facing down, put the clamps back on, added the weights again before I started getting everything ready to affix the holding boards to the back, which means I get to introduce you to another one of my new toys. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Ryobi Cordless Airstrike 18 gauge Brad Nailer. And oh my god, I'm in love with this thing. The Airstrike technology means that you no longer have to carry around a bulky air compressor with you anymore when you need to use a Brad Nailer. You can just carry an extra battery. The built in work lights make it so you can't even be stopped by the darkness. And don't even get me started about the OnePlus Lithium Plus HP 18 volt. 3 amp hour battery. This thing will get the job done. For some reason I feel like Jerry Seinfeld talking about classic cars all of a sudden. Let's get back to the project. With the boards clamped up and weighted down, I used the Brad Nailer to attach four beams across the back. This will offer some stability and rigidity to the flag when we hang it on a wall. Don't look at the flag, look at the Rocketeer. He stands for truth. Justice and the American way. Oh crap, he doesn't stand for anything. All right, let's look at the flag. You know, as flags go, it actually is really beautiful. If you look close at the blue section, the union, you can see I've already stenciled out the stars. It's a very simple process. All I did was take our stencil, line it up with the union section, tape it down, and stencil 50 stars. Just a quick word of caution. Remember that the top point of the star has to point up on the flag. Mine are pointing down because my flag is upside down, but this could be an easy place <clears throat> for someone to make a mistake. So in order to cut out all these 50 stars, I'm gonna be using this. This is the Dremel 3000 with an extension shaft on it. Um, it looks like some sort of snake thing, and I'm gonna make good use of this, so I purchased the shaft. Um, this is, I don't know, about 25 bucks, 30 bucks at one of those big box stores. And while I own the extension shaft now, I don't actually own a Dremel yet. That's one of the next purchases on my list. This one I borrowed from the same person that gave me that block of maple wood that we used to 
make the thousand subscriber play button. Um, if you haven't seen that video, that's a really good one. I'll link it somewhere up here, wherever the, the card comes out. Since we're using this carving tool that puts out quite a bit of noise and dust and throws pieces of wood around, I wanna make sure, of course, that I have my safety equipment on for breathing, for eyes, and of course, for ears. The decibel edge this puts out will destroy your ears over time, so take care of your ears and they'll take care of you. Uh, I'm actually not gonna wear these. I got new ones I wanna try out. They were like seven bucks at, uh, I think I got these at Cabela's, and I heard good things about them, so I'm gonna try these out. They're meant for guns, so I think it should be able to deal with the Dremel. Let's do this. Although I pulled all four of these Dremel bits out, I exclusively stuck to the 106 and 107 size carving tools for this project. They worked really well. I highly recommend them if you're gonna go the Dremel route. The process I used to get this done was actually also quite simple. I simply outlined the stars and then cleared out the centers for all 50. And that's really all it is. It takes time, but it's real easy. Another simple but very often overlooked step is just adding mounting hardware to the back of a piece you make. You don't have to, but it's those little extra touches that really get into a client's head that'll make them come back for something else. So choosing to use the Dremel on this was absolutely the right call. The detail that it got, the carving tool accessories that I chose to use with it, they did a wonderful, wonderful job. Not that I'm really surprised. I had a Dremel as a kid, but that was 20 plus years ago and it has come a long way since then. I will definitely be buying one. Now what you guys don't know is that this is actually being made for me to give to a veteran war friend of mine. And what she doesn't know is that she let me borrow her Dremel so that I could make this for her. If you guys want to see that go down, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, both of which of course are Burke Makes Stuff. If you like this project, watch one of these videos. They're around here somewhere, probably with a subscribe button. Make sure to click that too. Your subscription is free, and of course, it helps the channel immensely. So thank you so much for that. We'll see you guys next time, hopefully Wednesday at four o'clock, but you know, life does that thing that it does sometimes. We'll catch you later.